Okay, good evening and welcome to everyone to the uh, virtual town hall. I am uh, Carlton Brown, the Director of Finance. Uh, glad so many of you could join us this evening and there may be some others who are signing on as we go through the presentation. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Pete Holzgang, who is the church treasurer. And uh, I just wanted to say to start off with that, that Pete and I are fairly new to this. We uh, came on board about six months ago, a little bit less than that for Pete. So we're still in the process of uh, learning uh, what it is that we're doing, uh, trying to improve and be good stewards as we manage finances for the church. Uh, Every month we provide a briefing to the church council in some detail on where the church stands financially and any issues and so forth. And uh, tonight it's it's your turn. Our briefing is designed to be informational, uh, transparent, just to let you know here's what's going on. Here are some things on the agenda that we're trying to do. Um, and uh, to say thank you, we appreciate your faithful giving to the church during these uh, difficult times. Uh, Technology works pretty well when um, when it works, <laughs> and we're hoping everything will work well for us this, uh, this evening. Uh, I would ask that uh, you uh, try to keep your mics muted until we finish the presentation. It's not a very long presentation, and then we'll get to any questions that you have. It just helps us keep the process going. And with that, Pastor Burton is on, and uh, he's going to lead us in a word of prayer as we get started. All right, let us pray. And, and thank you all for joining us. This is a huge turnout. Uh, thank, thank you for your support. Lord, I just thank you for those men and women who uh, do our finances, who plan and, and who enable us to use the resources that you give us for your glory. And I pray that you be with us tonight. I thank you again for such a large gathering. And Lord, as we ask questions, as we look forward, uh, may everything we do uh, give you the honor and the glory. May we reach people for Christ, uh, use our resources to do that, and Lord, make disciples who will transform the world. Uh, I th again, I thank you for these leaders, and I ask your blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Pastor Burt. Okay, here's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Uh, again, an update on where we are with finances at Old Bridge uh, Church. We'll talk briefly on some biblical principles. Uh, there's some significant stewardship actions that were taken in uh, the year 2020 that impact uh, our finances, and we'll talk to you about those. Uh, Pete is going to uh, come on in a few slides, and he's going to share financial data. What are the numbers? What does it look like? And then uh, we'll close out with some trends and some challenges ahead as we uh, get ready to go into budgeting and we will respond to any questions you have uh, at that time. Uh, pretty straightforward on the biblical principle. Um, just re recognizing that, uh, you know, God told Joseph to store up for a coming famine. And so uh, what we're trying to do uh, at Old Bridge is build and maintain adequate reserves. Um, Two years ago, uh, we were drawing down upon our reserves just to make the budget every single month. And so we'll share some progress in that area. Uh, scriptures also tell us to work with what you're given. You know, the mission of the church continues and it's our job to keep doing God's work in God's community for God's people uh, when and wherever we can. So uh, let's not sit on the money that we have, let's use it. And then the final uh, principle that, uh, that Pete and I adhere to uh, for sure is transparency. There's nothing hidden here. Uh, we want to make sure that you understand where we are, uh, what the policies are, and what we're doing. Um, back in 2020, uh, at the beginning of, of that year, uh, there was a financial reorganization, and it involved several uh, elements, uh, one of which was simply to restructure the way that we account for things and uh, the placeholders that we use so that we can uh, be more accountable in terms of where the money's coming from and, and where it's going. Um, the reorganization effort also uh, tried to improve communications to the congregation. We started pulling some of this in the bulletin uh, a year ago. Now we don't have bulletins since we haven't been meeting 
for a period of time. Uh, but this town hall is, in fact, uh, part of that effort to keep the congregation informed. Uh, there was a policy manual written, uh, which refined policies and procedures. And essentially what we're talking about here is accountability, oversight, cross checks. Pete and I have a fairly specific list of actions uh, that we are to do and that we are not to do. Uh, I don't get to touch any money. I just get to look at it from hover up from above. Pete's the one who actually is in charge of disbursement. So we have uh, checks and balances in the system. Uh, we did have an annual audit uh, over the last year. Uh, the policy calls for audits each year. Uh, and uh, it also recommended a CPA audit, Certified Public Accountant Audit. And uh, the difference there, as I understand it, uh, at the annual audit, we have an outside firm that comes in, looks at the books and says, yes, you took in uh, X amount of dollars and you spent X amount of dollars and you're good. Uh, you know, maybe there's some nickels and dimes that were put in the wrong uh, place, but it's uh, a check to see that we're doing what we're supposed to do. We have not scheduled a CPA audit yet and probably will not uh, until sometime late in 2021, maybe early 2022. And, and the reason for that is the CPA audit also looks at your policies and procedures and says not only are you doing what you're supposed to do, you're following all the policies and all the procedures every time and it recommends changes and so forth. It's much more sophisticated uh, and expensive. The other area that we're looking at is uh, designated and restricted giving policies. That's uh, in progress. Uh, Pete will talk a little bit about that later on, but when someone sends a designated off offering to the church, that money can only be used for that specific purpose. And over a period of time, these build up. We have some designated offerings that have been sitting for five years. So how do you how do you make those funds useful and get them uh, to be used in the way that they were intended? So this is our first year fully operating under the new uh, guidelines. We're learning. Uh, it's going well so far and uh, we'll make any adjustments that we need to make uh, toward the end of this fiscal year. I want to talk about uh, <clears throat> the stewardship actions that have been taken. Uh, some of you may be aware, others not, that we refinanced the building loan in July of 2020. And uh, this is huge. Uh, we use the Virginia United Methodist uh, Development Corporation. Uh, if you look at those monthly payments, we were paying $15,160 per month on the building loan. Uh, that's dropped to a little over $9,000. And so, the end result there is that we have almost $6,000 more per month that we can spend on operations and ministries within the church. And so this is this was a huge savings and a good stewardship action. We also obtained a pay, uh, payroll protection plan uh, loan, and this has been used to help support and keep staff on board during the COVID uh, crisis. It was effective both for the church staff and for uh, the preschool and in fact allowed us to restart uh, the preschool and have those teachers on board. There was a changeover to the voice uh, phone system, uh, a technical item, but it's going to save us $2,400 a year. Uh, Dominion Energy uh, has a program uh, that you can sign up for. We've done that. Uh, they review your energy demands and help you figure out ways to reduce your energy cost over the years. We have four years left in that program, and uh, they will work with us and assist us in identifying, purchasing, and installing uh, the kinds of items that you see here uh, that will help us reduce cost in that area. And then the final uh, action was uh, part of that restructure to improve the tracking of gifts and expenses so that we really know where all the money comes from and uh, where it's going. Um, there were some negative impacts in 2020, as you might expect. Uh, COVID, don't need to say a lot about that. Um, 
roof repairs. Uh, every year we budget for repairs at the building at the uh, parsonage. Uh, 2020 was just one of those years. Uh, COVID struck as did other items. We had some items that are not covered by insurance. And uh, frankly, all the bills are still out uh, on that. So we're gonna have some additional expenses there. Uh, giving is, has been enough to keep, keep us going on a monthly basis, but uh, giving's down 10% over the previous year. And that year was down 10% over the previous year. So this is a concerning trend. Uh, the preschool is back up and operating. Uh, Pete will discuss this a little bit more. But uh, what they have been doing uh, is using their reserve funds to keep the program viable. Uh, the payroll protection program has helped in this, but because of COVID restrictions, the classroom sizes are limited and that limits income. So some items we need to keep working on. At this point in time, I'm going to stop gabbing and uh, turn it over to uh, Pete, who's gonna walk you through uh, some of the financial organization and some of the specific dollars. Pete? Thank you, Carlson. Um, just want to point out the, our financial organization. These are the folks that are here to execute the budget. They're basically the ones that take your money in and uh, see that it goes out to the right place as the uh, church council directs us to with the budget. Um, I really want to give a good shout out to our two bookkeepers, Fafa and uh, Christina. They're the ones that do all the QuickBook calculations and uh, keep me straight in particular, because I'm certainly not an accountant and account for the dollars and the different accounts and the uh, disbursements and, and the like. Um, as well as I wanna recognize our counters, Susan Beer, Nancy Gerhardt, Kathy McRae, Sharon Porter, Nancy Holtzgang, Mary Alice Hewitt, Ellen McKinnon, and Robin Brothier. They're our counters. Now, during non-COVID times, typically we'd have four of those women come in on a Monday morning after there's our Sunday churches and they go through all of our receipts that have been given in the plate and in the mail and account for those and uh, make a deposit into the bank. Two of them would typically be counting the, uh, the cash and two would count the checks. They'd check each other and then two would go to the bank and make the deposit. And um, then uh, FAFA, would uh, account for that and reconcile it with our checking account. Um, since COVID has struck, um, Susan Bader and Nancy Gerhardt have, have done all the counting. Okay, so when, when COVID struck, we stopped counting on Mondays, uh, every Monday, and we were just basically doing it once a month. Since about October timeframe-ish, maybe November-ish, we're doing it twice a month now. We're, uh, Susan and Nancy will do the counting typically on Friday mornings because the, uh, the finance office is not used um, much in the mornings there and for COVID protections. So if you've seen your checks maybe not clearing quite as fast as you're used to in the past or, or the like, um, that's the reason for, it, for their safety with the COVID uh, protocols. Um, just a little editorial comment. Um, looking for a volunteer for a financial secretary type of position or, or, or the like. But basically what the counters do is they, they fulfill the role about 95% of what a financial secretary would do. That extra 5%, um, I could use a little bit of assistance uh, when it comes to interfacing with the, the bookkeepers and uh, the counters and the designated funds in particular. Next slide, please. First of all, I wanna thank you all for your generous support uh, during these difficult times, <clears throat> um, I'm not here to try to ask you for more money. I just want to tell you kind of most efficient ways to give to the church and how 100% of your donation could go to the church. So the most efficient way, 100%, is if you set up a bill pay through your checking account at your personal bank. That way, um, we're going to get a, a check in the mail or electronically, but I think it's typically in the mail. And our counters will be put to work uh, when they come in and just end up depositing it into our checking account um, for the church. Second way is just to write a check and drop it in the mail and, or 
drop it at the office or whatever, and it'll get deposited as well. The third way is to use the Facebook account. And I'll be quite honest with you, I'm not super familiar with that, but they're not charging us anything for that. And there's a few people in the church that do use the Facebook to uh, make their deposits. Online giving at givingoldbridgechurch.org is another method to, to um, make your donations to the church. And what I'll say about this is, is that that organization that has set up that easy giving system um, is taking a cut of the money. So roughly 1% of your money, if you're using um, through your bank, you're doing automatic um, bank deposits type of thing through that process versus doing it through your bank, which would be free, they're charging us about 1% for that. And if you use your credit card, um, there's a charge of about 3%. Now I understand when you use that system, you know, you, there's a check off in there where you can say, hey, I want that money. Um, that 3% is an extra $5 or $10 or $15, whatever it is. I want to cover that with additional giving to cover that. Um, there is a way to do that. But I just want you to realize that they're still taking their cut out of that. So the way if you give $100, we will get $100 if you write us a check. Um, if you're using the online giving system, there, a portion of that's going to come out. And it doesn't sound like much, but over a year, um, it's going to it's going to exceed six thousand dollars this year. And uh, we're already beyond three thousand just for the six first six months of this year. The other thing I'd like to just point out, I think most of us have used Amazon before to order things uh, through the internet. Uh, if you go through the Amazon smile website which is amazon's website it's just used the amazon smile website you can register there um, a charity and you could use old bridge united methodist church or any other charity of your choice but a half a percent of whatever you order or buy uh, will go to that charity so that's that's free money so for those of you that don't know about that you might think about doing that next slide please Things I want you to take away with the general offering slide, a um, couple things. First of all, you see December, the giving is um, twice or better than what it is typically in any other month. So it was about two years ago or so where we used to be on a, an annual budget. So we started on the 1st of January, we ended up on 31st December. Well, some smart people, and it wasn't me, um, um, figured that, hey, we should maybe change our fiscal year so our fiscal year starts on the 1st of July and ends at the end of June. So we can account for the big bump in um, giving in December because it's pretty hard to budget when, you know, virtually two plus months of revenue is coming in and it's the last day of your budget cycle and try to reconcile all that. So that was a very smart move and part of the uh, the folks that pre uh, that were here before me. The other thing I want to say about the general operate is this, this is a very specific slide in the sense that I'm only referencing general offering. If you make a designated gift, let's say for instance, you gave $100 last month and you said $90 of that was to go to XYZ, then your general offering amount would only be nine, maybe, a, let me, let me say this again. Okay, if you gave $100 and $10 of that was going to go to a designated gift, you would only be, you would only have $90 that would be credited in the general offering. The rest would be go to go to that designated gift. So this, this slide does not include any designated gifts. The other thing I want to point out is uh, the average giving from January through November of 2019 is $4,300 and change. And it's since uh, January through November, so those are COVID numbers now, it, it's dropped down and that's about 10%. And you can see later in December how uh, robust the giving is um, with those three numbers from 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, but again, when you average it all out, our giving is down 10% from last year to this, or from 2019 to 2020. Next slide, please. So how are we doing financially? Our general offering from July to December was $273,900. Our church expenses, excluding the preschool, which I will cover later, is uh, just under that. 
So we're basically covering our, our bills. Income roughly equals uh, expenses and the PP funds have not been included and I'll address those later as we go as well. Um, in addition, we've given 7,000 to acts through the emergency fund through debit designated giving and almost 7,000 for apportionments, which are 10,000 of our priority one apportionments. Next slide, please. Talking about the preschool, the church council made a recent decision to reopen the preschool, knowing that it would operate at a loss. The alternative was to lay off the personnel and be faced with trying to reopen the school from scratch. We reopened in October with a reduced enrollment due to COVID, and we lost a little over $21,000 through December, and we anticipate losing a similar amount in the spring semester as well. The preschool has sufficient funds to tide them over to the fall where they should once again become profitable. Typically the preschool, you know, is making money, is not losing money. And uh, when it comes to the reserves that they're dipping into, those are reserves that they generated through previous um, sessions with the preschool. Next slide, please. So this is our uh, account balances. Um, I'm sorry. Paycheck Protection Program. Okay. In April, Kevin applied for the PPP funds. And these are This is a government program, okay? Um, and we received a loan of $89,600. The loan will become a grant over the next few months. Last week, we applied to have the loan forgiven. So it takes a while for that to happen. Um, but we anticipate that, that $89,600 um, will no longer be a loan. It will be a grant. The preschool enabled us to receive 48% of the PPP funds because of their, um, um, sal their, their salary positions, which was uh, what the purpose of the PPP is for. Um, and we only qualify for the PP for the next round of PPP funds due to the preschool because we had to show a 25% loss um, in any given quarter. And we could not do that just with the church accounting. We needed to account for the preschool as well. And because of that, we qualify for another PPP loan, which we applied for last week. And we anticipate getting the same amount of money or more or less. And we also anticipate it to be forgiven as well. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, we, we jumped a slide. I'm gonna try to go backwards. That's a little harder to do. Okay. Uh, but let's see if we can do that. There we go. Okay. I think I covered this, did I not? I believe I covered this. You did, Pete. Yeah. Maybe this one is not covered. Uh, so our count balances. So we basically have for the church checking account, we, we have $92,000 in the account. Um, we opened up a credit union account to put surplus funds in from the checking accounts because we didn't want to have a ton of money laying around in a checking account where um, it could be um, We opened up the other account so we could place excess funds that were in the checking account. And we anticipate the $100,000 is kind of a shock absorber. So you saw how great the giving is in December. Well, as we get up to our next December, you know, 11 months from now, that checking account balance is going to draw down. So I would anticipate that we're going to have to transfer funds in from the credit union into our checking account to infuse um, to make that so we can pay our bills on a on a routine basis. The preschool checking account uh, balances are shown there and the preschool liabilities is shown as well. And the liabilities for the preschool are such thing as, as uh, prepaid tuition and some um, deposits the like for, for classes that are coming up. So the net is um, 10,000 less basically than what they have. So they're, if you really wanna look at their checking account, you know, what they really could have spent is closer to 16,000 versus 26,000. And they have $39,000 in their reserve account, which again is reserves that they generated through their operations in years past. Next slide, please. So you might ask, well, why do we have so much money in all these checking accounts and the like? So 
first of all, prudent planning based on the, the PPP funds. So that was a loan. It is still a loan until it becomes a grant. And we anticipate it to be a grant, but it is not at this point. Our mortgage mm -hmm. lender requires, our mortgage lender requires us to have 100,000 our reserve account. Our checking account balance, as I said before, is typically its greatest right now, and will draw down as we approach next December, typically. The preschool will be drawing down on the reserves. Admission trips have been postponed due to COVID, so there's some other um, things that we would fund more um, in, the, in the past, but more robustly, uh, so those funds are still there. And um, the council agreed to uh, disperse over $6,000 uh, to ACTS and uh, Guatemala Mission um, this past council meeting. And the other thing is, you know, we have a lot of assets in the church as far as uh, buildings, roofs, uh, parsonage and the like, and uh, life happens, okay? So we, we had the leak in the new wing and we anticipate that total cost is gonna be around $18,000. We've dispersed uh, most of those funds, but there's still maybe a six or $7,000 uh, bill that we have to pay for that. In the previous year, we had to replace a HVAC uh, system and I believe that was around $12,000 or so. Uh, we also want to have sufficient funds available to take advantage of some of these programs um, that present themselves, uh, like the Dominion Electric Program. And the way I look at that program is something like, you know, your 401k where your company is giving you a match for your retirement plan or something like that. So um, Dominion Electric will, will pay us uh, a rebate for some of the energy efficiency things that uh, we could do with the church um, down the line. Next slide, please. I'll turn it over to you, Carlton. All right, thanks, Pete. Um, well, uh, when we talk about challenges ahead, these are just items that we're considering as we plan for the budget for next year. Uh, obviously, we want to continue doing the things that the church does. We're hopeful that COVID, I think we're all hopeful that COVID dies, <laughs> dies down. We can get back to church. We can get back to doing more community uh, items. Uh, we have two vacant staff positions. And I think we should keep in mind as we talk about budget and the fact that we're uh, meeting our bills every month, uh, we're not paying those staff right now. So that's going to impact uh, the budgeting for next year. Uh, later on uh, this month, and uh, in particular during the month of March, we'll be working to develop the budget for the fiscal year 21-22 cycle. Uh, and when we do that, we have to look at where we are in terms of our giving. Uh, if we're barely making our payments and staying in the black on a monthly basis right now, and we start adding staff, where does that money come from? What programs stay, which programs go? Just a lot to think about. Um, Pete talked about the designated and restricted giving policies. This is an ongoing effort. Uh, you know, people correctly donate to areas of the church mission that they're passionate about. And we want to see that money spent. If it's given for missions, we want to get the money out there and make sure that we're doing missions. Um, on the other hand, you can't just take that money and move it around. So uh, we, we need to look at what we have and uh, what we can do with those funds to, through contacting people, seeing if some of those funds uh, with their permission can be changed. Um, and finally, uh, Kate mentioned uh, apportionment. I mentioned it just briefly. In uh, September of 2019, the uh, church council voted to suspend apportionment payments on a regular basis. Uh, at that time, we were drawing back on our reserves uh, rather heavily. Uh, we're in a little bit better shape now, and uh, we'll be looking at how we can readdress that as we do budgeting uh, in the uh, new fiscal year. I think um, that leads us to questions. That's a lot of information. And uh, I'm going to get get off the screen here. And uh, as soon as I figure there we go. And let's see, we have a nice group on the uh, chat. So. The, the floor is open for any questions or comments that uh, anyone might have.
Uh, this is Jim Rellier. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. A couple of questions. Um, you mentioned a 2020 guidance manual of some sort. I looked on the church website. I, I couldn't find that. Um, that's one that's a comment. Also, you've mentioned providing a monthly report to the church council. Um, a lot of us are interested in church finance, but we're not on the church council. Can that be made more generally available? And the last thing is uh, just a, a personal comment. I strongly support uh, paying our apportionments. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do because we need to be connected to the larger United Methodist Church to the extent possible. And those fundings are for uh, important missions of the church, uh, including things we would call mission outreach, not just administrative cost. That's it. Okay, Jim, uh, thank you for those comments. Uh, I would say uh, the the full report to council is fairly detailed. Uh, some of that information was provided, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, you know there are no no hidden agenda items here. Uh, let me work with uh, with Pete and council and see what we can make available uh, as far as the monthly reports are. are. Uh, with regard to the policy manual, it is a church finance policy manual. Uh, Kevin, is that available on the website or? Uh, it is not uh, available on the website. It was approved as of June of last year, um, and I think it was approved mostly as an internal document. There's nothing um, secretive about it, but we haven't specifically published it. Um, if anybody would like a copy, please let me know. I can email it to you. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments? It's Denise Carlton, Pete. I just want to say thank you for the um, update. It was very informative. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Pete crunches all the numbers. I, I just do the high level stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't get to touch any of the money. I just get to look at it from afar. <laughs> hey, guys, I had a second that you guys did a really Great, concise. I know that these things will be super detailed, uh, and I think that you guys did a really good job and, and hit a lot of the high points. So I appreciate it. Thank you for communicating it well with us. Okay. Uh, just a comment: uh, if you think of something uh, that you want more information on or an explanation of, uh, send it to uh, finance at oldbridgechurch.org. And uh, I'll get together with the appropriate folks, Pete, Council, whatever, and uh, we'll be responsive. You know, my my personal view is that given given COVID and people not being in church, we've we've hung in there pretty well. Uh, I agree. We uh, we have we have some work to do for the next year. The uh, downward wind in giving is is concerning, you know, given the fact that we want to continue to do uh, the mission of the church and we may have other things that we want to do. But that said, um, we'll keep pressing forward. Final option for questions. Uh, Carlton, this is Ron Taylor. Yes. I just want to say that, you know, I feel great knowing that the money's in your hands. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Well, I just want you to know that this uh, picture of the resort behind me is not is not one that I use with church funds. Well, you see me, I'm hiding in the shadows. Uh, well, you won't find me. It's a, it's on a remote island somewhere. Doing God, I'm doing God's work from the shadows. So, uh, <laughs> hate to see all of you. It's you know, it's a true blessing to see all of you. All right, thank you. Uh, by the way, with the the way the policy manual works, and I really think it's. Uh, it's, it's pretty pretty specific as to what the duties are. Uh, and um, we're supposed to do town halls like this at least twice a year. And uh, so my, I, I'm new to council and new to this job. And 
uh, I'm going to do the best. Uh, Pete and I are going to do the best that we can to keep you informed. Uh, if there's something you see that you have questions about, please do not hesitate to call us. We'll respond. With that, if there are no further questions, uh, let's do a quick no, no question, but a comment. And people have given you guys great thanks. But I also, having been around for quite a while, can look back over the years and observe. It's interesting to me that in a job like, well, any of them really on board, as long as there are no major hurdles to accomplish or get over, you think, well, we just kind of keep going where we're going. But for the last couple of years, uh, and particularly you guys too, have come in and looked and said, well, what can we do to improve? Where, where are the things that we can make this better? And in this case, of course, it's be better stewards of our finances. So and kudos to you guys for doing that. Thanks. I'd like to also share my comments and uh, thank the whole team. It, it's all expression doing more with less. There's always more to do, but, but it seems like you have really come up with some good policies that keep things going in very challenging times. Yeah. Amen. Well, I hate to, I hate to say this, but you know, judging by the number of gray hairs and no hairs I see here, you know, this is this is the group that learned how to do more. Work. Be <laughs> so, our job is to teach the younger ones how to do more with less, and that's getting harder and harder because they keep saying, "Well, you know, give us more. We got to do less with more." And we're going, "No, no, it doesn't work that way." But you know, it's um, the it's work. Ron, I haven't lost all my hair yet, but uh, I'm working on it. Uh, mine's pretty much gone. I think, I, 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 I think uh, go. Carlton and Pete and, and, and the like have, have definitely been, been helping to teach me a, a, a good bit about this. Um, so I, I'm appreciative of, uh, of them as well. Okay, let's bow for <clears throat> a short word of prayer. Father, just thank you for the opportunity to meet in this fashion. Uh, thank you for those who are concerned about your finances. You do ask us to be good stewards. We want to be good stewards of your money. As we look at the, the challenges ahead and the opportunities that we have, I pray that you'll just guide us in making the decisions that will glorify your name and help us build that community uh, that's uplifted by the Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody stay safe. Have a great evening. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Bye. Nice job, Carlton.